Martini, you got it. Now, would you like that shaken or stirred? Hey there, how's it going you beautiful people? Dave Allred, The Real Barman here, creator of the powerful online bartending course, The Real Bar Course. That last gyration move was inspired by Vinny Montana, a good friend of mine I used to bartend with. How you doing Vinny? He used to use that and charm the ladies, whereas I come off more creepy, so I stuck with a more traditional, put the martini shaker on the bar and would create my cocktails that way, even though it was a little more boring. I couldn't pull it off like Vinny. Nevertheless, today I'm going to teach you when you should shake a cocktail or when you should stir it, at least in the traditional sense. Some people want their cocktail shaken when it should be stirred and we should give it to them that way. Anyone who knows me knows that I get on a soapbox sometimes about mixologists who look down their nose at people if they don't order it correctly or the bartender doesn't make it correctly when really we should be giving the guests exactly what they want. I do believe we need some rules in place. We can't have people out there making margaritas with roses, lime juice. And Sazeracs with peppermint schnapps or whatever unless the guests want it that way then we should give it to them on the other side of things sometimes guests just aren't sure they're not very educated and they want us to guide them they want a professional to kind of tell them what to do and that way we should go ahead and just prepare it in the traditional way so they get a drink as it should be prepared but when it comes down to it the best way to prepare a cocktail is to make it exactly how they want it, not because someone 70 years ago said it should be done this way. Okay, let's get back to why you're here, which is learning when you should shake and when you should stir a cocktail. It's really not that complicated. The rules are pretty simple. So I'll talk about when you should do each and then I'll show you how to do each so you have the whole kit and caboodle, you have the whole package. Now, of course, the purpose of either technique is to get the cocktail cold to chill it, but you're going to get very different results depending on which technique you use. They're both going to cause dilution, no matter which technique you use. Nothing melts ice faster than liquor, so you want to make sure that you're putting plenty of ice in your martini shaker so it dilutes it, and we make sure that we fill the martini glass to a full amount that's going to make the guest happy. Yes, I said martini glass for all you purists out there who say it's supposed to be called a cocktail glass. They're all cocktail glasses. Call it what it should be. This is a martini glass. Shaking is going to dilute the liquor a lot faster than stirring is because you shake it vigorously, it speeds up the process. So now let's talk about the rules on when to shake and when to stir. We're going to shake anything that gets juice, citrus, cream, any bar mixer we're going to shake unless it's carbonated. We don't shake anything carbonated. It can bubble up and explode and make this go crazy, but it also makes the mixer go flat and it loses its flavor. We're gonna stir any cocktail that gets pure liquor. Martinis, Manhattans, with the exception of bitters. Bitters is allowed to go into Manhattan. We still stir that, we're not gonna shake it. It's more of a flavor enhancer, even though it technically does have alcohol in it. Now, the main purpose for shaking is to make sure that all the ingredients get mixed up really well. Especially if you have like cream or something really thick, we really gotta shake it up. You can't just stir it like it's ingredients, like it's batter and you're making a cake. You really have to shake it vigorously, get it all shaken up. This is really helpful and useful when you're making things like a Ramos Fizz or a Pisco Sour, anything that gets egg whites and you wanna make it really frothy and give it a nice presentation. In addition to diluting the liquor faster, shaking it up is gonna change the texture of the drink because it adds aeration to it. And also it can break up the ice into little tiny shards, which is why we strain it a lot of times to get rid of that ice. But some people like it that way. In fact, here in Danville, California, nine out of 10 people order the martini shaken instead of stirred because they like it really cold. In fact, some of them want it shaken up so well that it causes that little thin layer. It's almost like a martini slushy. And again, tradition doesn't matter. Give the people what we want. We call that penguin style around here. But traditionally, vodka and gin martinis are stirred. They're not shaken. Just make sure you ask how they want it every time. Some people like traditional and some people are on the James Bond bandwagon. All right, in just a second, I'm gonna show you how to both shake and stir, but let's talk about stirring really quickly. 
Stirring is more of a gentle method of getting the liquid cold and it takes aeration out of it. So what you get after you stir it is a nice silky smooth liquid that comes out of the strainer when it goes into the glass. And I have to admit, I really like the smooth look of a Manhattan in the glass. It's like a mountain lake at six in the morning, no wind, inviting, just slick and dark as glass. It is, however, more difficult to get the liquid cold when you stir it, so it's a bit of a trade-off. The more chilled it is, the more diluted the liquid's gonna be, so it's really a matter of preference. Okay, let's talk about shaking first. We need our Boston shaker, you need your mixing glass, which is traditionally just a pint glass, and we're gonna build all of our ingredients in the pint glass. We're gonna put our ice in the Boston shaker, we'll dump it in, we'll seal it, and then we'll shake. I'm just gonna use Grey Goose right here to make a martini like they like it around here. I'm not gonna put a bunch of ingredients in here. I'm just showing you shaking methods, so don't email me and tell me I made the drink wrong. So, we pour our liquid, all of our ingredients in here, we put our ice in the shaker, we dump it in, and then we're gonna pop and put a nice seal on here so the liquid doesn't fly all over the place when we're trying to shake it. Now, when you go to shake it, don't do this crap. I see sometimes where you put one on the bottom, one on top. Mixologists love to do this, and then they just, they sh Oh, you look like you're being electrocuted. You look ridiculous. Stop it. Just shake it. Right here, this side, this side, whatever's comfortable for you. It's like the shake weight, right? And you're just getting some exercise, you're smiling. That's all you have to do. So let's talk about how long you should shake it for. You should shake it vigorously for about 10 seconds. I see some instructional videos and stuff where people are talking about 20 to 30 seconds you're gonna shake a cocktail. This is absolutely unrealistic. If you get a Cosmo and a lemon drop and a pomegranate martini on a Friday night when everyone's waiting for drinks, you're gonna shake them for 30 seconds each. That's 90 seconds, a minute and a half of making three drinks. People are waiting for it. It's not gonna happen. And it doesn't matter. 10 seconds is plenty long enough to get this drink super cold. So, we pour our liquid in. We get our ice, fill it up nicely, dump the liquid in. Now we're gonna pop it with the palm of our hand. Creates a nice seal so the liquid doesn't fly everywhere. Now we're gonna shake it like we should. That's plenty long enough. You don't need to go any longer. Now, you can see this angle right here, right on the right side of this angle. I'm gonna pop it with my hand right on the side, and it's gonna loosen the glass, it's gonna pop the seal, and then you can go ahead and pour your liquid in. Get your strainer, strain it into the glass, and that liquid's nice and cold, and it's nice and mixed up. That's shaking. Okay, on to stirring. Stirring, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna build our drink in the, in the mixing glass. Let's pretend we're making a Manhattan here. Again, I'm only gonna use a single ingredient. I'm not gonna uh, put a bunch of ingredients in here. We're just talking about technique. Then we're gonna add the ice. This is our traditional stirring spoon. You can use another stirring instrument. This is tradition. Again, you could do this and it would stir it just as well, but you would probably be, once again, scrutinized by all the purists out there. However, it's nice to have a presentation with the spoon. So what we wanna do is we're putting the spoon between our index and our middle finger. You can see my thumb is pinching down. This is the traditional way. We wanna put the back of the spoon on the edge of the, the inside of the glass. And as it rotates, it should stay on the back. All right, this is the proper technique for doing this is you keep it on the back. Now, if you can stir it just as well without doing that, you're fine, believe me. But once we, so we get in the glass, and we stir it, okay? Pretty soon as you practice this, you'll get faster and faster at it. How long should you stir? Longer than you shake a martini because it takes a little longer to get the, the liquid cold when you're stirring as we spoke about earlier. But again, some people say 45 seconds, forget about it. If you stir this for a good 20 seconds, it'll be as good as it can get and then you can go ahead and pour it. So let's zoom in just a little bit here for you. You can see how the back of the spoon stays on the inside of the glass as I roll it around. And you can see I'm using my thumb to kind of push it. This little swizzle on the stick makes it really nice to kind of twirl it. But we just kind of move it back and forth. You can see my middle finger just kind of moving it around back and forth. And the more you practice, the faster you can get at it. And that's going to do it for today's lesson. I hope you learned something. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you and I 
can remain close friends. If you're interested in becoming a professional rock star bartender quickly, check out the Real Bar course here. See if registration is still open. If not, you can get on the waiting list. I'm going to see you next time. I'm out.